Hello everybody, my name is Benjamin Bloom and once again we have big news and a big name coming to the championship. Nottingham Forest are set to announce former player Martin O'Neill as their new manager. Um, it's apparently been agreed and they're ironing out all the details right now and it's going to be announced in the next 24 hours. Um, no information yet as to whether Roy Keane, who had been his assistant for the Republic of Ireland in his last job, is coming with him. Perhaps that might be the delay. Maybe Martin has agreed and um, they're negotiating with Roy. Complete speculation on my part, but hey, something's holding it up and it's either fine details or... Um, or possibly something like that in the background. So I did a video last week on Itor Karanka being fired. He'd only been at Forest um, 26 games, I think it was, by the time he went. Some meddling in the background, we think. Um, disagreement, personal issues, what have you. So in comes Martin O'Neill, who um, right through his history um, has not stood for meddling and... Um, not stood for people interfering in the background. Um, O'Neill, obviously the history as a player is well known. He was in that amazing Brian Clough team uh, that won the, let's get this right, they won the league, then they won the European Cup twice, they won the League Cup twice, they also won the European Super Cup. And they started in the second division as it was then, up to the top division and just won everything. Uh, famously, O'Neill does have two um, Champions League medals, they'd be called now, European Cup winners medals, but didn't play in the first final. I think um, a big a big thing with me, I'd, and I'd highly recommend the, um, the documentary. I, I believe in miracles, that's what it's called. Um, I'd highly recommend any football fan who hasn't seen that to watch that amazing stuff. So O'Neill is a Forest legend. They have been this way before. I remember um, Stuart Pearce was greeted like a messiah. That didn't work out. And I mean, if you look through Forest managers, um, there's basically been one, I couldn't even name you all of them. If we go backwards, Warburton, uh, well, Karanka, Warburton, Montagnier, there'd be Stuart Pearce in there, Billy Davis, um, and you can go all the way back. It feels like they haven't had any stability since sort of Paul Hart was there for um, a few years, right at the start of the century, really. Um, so... He's a club legend, um, Forrest um, going for that kind of feel-good, I guess, appointment there. Um, O'Neill, we talked about him as a player, so as a manager, started um, at Wickham Wanderers, did great things um, with them, spent a while um, down there learning his trade, FA trophies and a couple of promotions, I think, with Wickham. Um, then he went to Norwich, um, and this is where... I was alluding to with the um, doesn't like the meddling at the top for the first time. I remember Robert Chase, the Norwich chairman there. They were a selling club and um, he resigned when he was very well thought of and Norwich were doing rather well. Went off to Leicester and immediately got them promoted. Had a great run at Leicester. Um, two League Cups, um, got them into Europe, obviously, um, and battling up in the Premier League at a time when um, it was thought that it was impossible to go up from the second tier and do well in the Premier ship as it was then, not the Premier League. Um, the football that he became known for wasn't exactly the Brian Clough model. I distinctly remember a midfield three of Savage, Is it, and Lennon running around and um, not necessarily focusing on passing more um, you know, getting around the opposition. Big centre-halves, um, Jerry Taggart, Matt Elliott, um, people like that. Um, remember the wing-backs were Guppy and Impey and the balls went in the box to Heskey and Cotty. So it was very much what I call underdog football, playing to your strengths and giving the other team something to think about that they don't normally have. He then went off to Celtic and... I guess people still have that, um, and it happens to Brendan Rodgers now, that stigma with if a manager does it at, in Scotland, does that qualify them 
as a really, really good manager. They still, there's still a sense that they need to prove it elsewhere. Um, the big thing was, I mean, he won leagues with Celtic. He did have Henrik Larsson, who's arguably probably one of the top three greatest Celtic players ever um, at the time there. The big one where he missed out, he got to the UEFA Cup final, losing to Jose Mourinho's Porto side way back when. I think if he'd won that for Celtic, I think he'd be held in possibly slightly higher regard um, as a manager than he is. That would have been the affirmation, winning a European trophy with a Scottish um, team would have been amazing. Um, So he wins everything in Scotland, comes back to England, and it was Aston Villa. And this was at the time when Randy Lerner was, um, you know, kind of putting the money in and interested. And I think it was three sixth place finishes, but... They spent, I mean, if you look at the um, the amount they spent at around that time, I mean, it would be nothing. It would be, if you looked at the figures now, it wouldn't even stack up to what gets spent now. But they did spend, and I think Lerner kind of realised, oh, um, that was the time when there was an established top four, sort of Man United, Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, and you couldn't get near without, as we've then learned since... Uh, an Arab billion, billion, billion trillionaire like Man City did to um, to usurp all of that. Again at Villa, the football was effective, but it wasn't um, what you'd term progressive or pleasing on the eye, so to speak. Um, and again, got to a League Cup final there. And if, I th- if I'm remembering this correctly, that was one against Man United where... Uh, Vidic should have been sent off uh, immediately. So again, unlucky in a in a final, and that um, you know that big trophy there sort of eluding him um, at Villa that might have been more affirmation. So there's kind of questions all the way through. Look, I know we're talking about a championship team. Um, there was a spell then at Sunderland. Um, obviously, they've been very hard to manage over the years, and again. Um, disagreements possibly there with interference in the background certainly at Villa it was um, I think the quote was something like um, the owner and the manager are still friends but they disagree on how to move the club forward I think O'Neill likes to be given a fair amount of money to spend he didn't get any money to spend when he was manager of the Republic of Ireland and that was where the relationship comes with Roy Keane Um, and that has recently um, finished um, maybe a last three months or so. I don't know exactly when he finished up there. And obviously, the the link with Keane, Keane um, really made his name at Forest before you know becoming such a great captain for Man United. Obviously, as an Ipswich fan, I've got rather worse memories of um, of Roy Keane um, in a management role because he was a hopeless manager for Ipswich, having done uh, pretty well at Sunderland beforehand. So. I'm not 100% sure about um, Martin O'Neill and how this is going to pan out. On the one hand, it seems like it's a bit of a feel-good um, appointment bringing an ex-player from the glory years back. Will that work? Will that not? Didn't work with Stuart Pearce. Obviously, um, O'Neill's got a far, far better... Well, he's got a track record as a manager and Pearce just really didn't, did he? Um would Roy Keane come with him? That would be double, um, you know, bringing back big names and great players from your past. Um, obviously, O'Neill's prime as a manager seems to be that Celtic and early Villa period, which is now over 10 years ago, over a decade ago. And um, the work at Sunderland and Republic of Ireland not quite held in quite as high regard. What I will say is he hasn't stepped down to championship level um, wouldn't have been at that kind of second tier level since he was at Leicester, which God would have been 1996, so a good 23 years ago. So it just remains to be seen whether he's um, still got that um, about him. He used to be a very charismatic manager and a real player motivator, and a, you know a little bit eccentric. Um, Going to be really interested to see what style of football it will be because I think there were some complaints from the Forest owners about the style of football under Karanka. Karanka could be quite um, pragmatic and quite defensive. 
I don't really see they would be, I mean, I'm there to be proven wrong. And I think with O'Neill, I think the sense is when he has better players, um, you know, you will see some good football. But um, I've always had the sense it was battling first and character first and rather than any kind of philosophy about out footballing the other team. I don't think that was ever really the way. But at this level in the championship, can he come in and be a bigger personality and a bigger name? Does that does that count for anything? You can see I'm really, really not sure how this is all going to pan out. So what I would like is some feedback from the people on this uh, channel. Forest fan, Wickham fan, Norwich fan, Celtic fan, Leicester fan, Ireland fan, Sunderland fan. Any um, feedback on O'Neill would be good. Um, any feedback from um, any fan of any team. How do you think this is going to go? Is O'Neill a big enough character with a big enough name? Can he bring Roy Keane with him? Um, or have his best days gone by? And is this a bit of a romantic appointment by Forrest? How do you see it playing out? Could go one of two ways. I don't think there's going to be much of a grey area. Um, Forrest have this reputation for having loads of managers and firing them quickly. O'Neill has a reputation for a combustible relationship with owners. Really does look like a fascinating one. And I'm really interested to know in the comments how on earth you think this is going to play out. Um, is it a thumbs up or a thumbs down for this appointment? And what do you think could be the strengths and could be the weaknesses of it? Um, we're going to watch with interest. Like I say, I'm recording this before the final announcement's made, so I don't know whether Mr Keane will be with him or not or whether you think that matters. Also, uh, John Robertson, another Forest European Cup winner, could uh, come with him. He's been with him at a lot of jobs, particularly Leicester and Celtic. I know he was there. So again, is that something that is plausible? Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. As you can see, I've got a fair bit of information about his past, but not not really clued in as to um, how I think. I don't have a good read on this. We don't have a good frame of reference for O'Neill in the championship. So um, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Really interested in what people think in the comments. Um, if you're a championship fan, please hit that subscribe button. Loads of good championship content coming up. Going to be at Norwich, Birmingham and probably Blackburn, Ipswich at the weekend. And we'll be doing the preview on Thursday and a review on Sunday. So loads of stuff. Those are YouTube live streams as well, the preview and the review, where you can actually get involved and interact and uh, give me your comments in real time and I can react to them, which is always good fun. Anyway, the bones of this video is uh, O'Neill to Forrest, so really interested in that. You can also find me on Twitter, at Benjamin Bloom. Um, really interested in interacting with championship fans. Um, I know a lot about Ipswich, but I can't be everywhere, so I really do rely on the feedback of other people. Um, thank you very much for watching. As I say, get involved with your opinions. This is probably going to be quite a divisive one, so it doesn't matter if you disagree with me or anyone else in the comments. Really just interested in getting some feedback. Thank you very much for watching and more when we get it.